This is a lesson for Chapter 5, Section 1's Angle Relationships. And it's a topic that we've talked about a little bit before, and it's a little bit more vocabulary that we've seen in the past, and we'll take a look at vertical angles. And vertical angles are ones that are opposite one another, and they only share a vertex. And so if I was to draw a set of vertical angles, all I have to do is draw an X. So if I draw an X right there, you see these two angles right here, this angle and this angle here, are vertical one another and they're exactly the same every time because you see this line goes all the way down this one goes all the way down this one this direction and they only share a point the two angles only share a point where the two lines come together and that's called our vertex and vertical angles again are opposite one another and so another set of vertical angles would be this one here and this one over here and they're going to be congruent angles as well adjacent angles are ones that are next to one another so if I was to draw an angle like that and this one here would be adjacent so you see I have they both share this side right here so these two angles are adjacent to one another supplementary angles is when we end up having two angles making 180 degrees when we add the two angles together so I started with a straight line and then I just drew a line going up at an angle and so this angle right here and this angle right here will add to make that straight angle of 180 degrees, and those are called supplementary angles. Complementary are when they add to make 90 degrees. So if I start with a 90 degree angle, and I just draw a line going out to, from that uh, vertex of those two points, then this angle right here and this angle right here would have to add together to equal 90 degrees if I start with a 90 degree angle to start with. This symbol right here means perpendicular, and perpendicular means that we end up having two lines that form a right angle. And so when I say that the line BF here, so this line right here, is perpendicular to FHD, so this line right here, that means that we have a right angle. So this angle right here would be right, this angle would be right, this angle here would be right, and this angle would be right. So what they want us to do is name some different angles and so some vertical angles to start with. So again, vertical angles are ones that are opposite one another. They share a vertex, but you've got to look at the line going all the way down. Like this one here goes all the way down. So I'm going to look at angle CIB. So angle CIB. And that one is going to be vertical to, so we'll say it's vertical, vertical to, and then it's got to share the vertex. So this point only. And so it's going to be, if I look at this line right here, it's going to go G I and then F, G I F. So angle G I F. So they both have I in the center, notice, because that's the common vertex. So that's just one set. Another set would be this one, B I A. So angle B I A is going to be vertical, vertical two. So B I A here. So I've got to continue out from B. So it'd be like F I and then E. See how E and A are in line with one another. So F I E. So angle F I E. And again, notice how I is in the center. Now I could have written this the other way. I could have written this as angle E I F, and it means the same thing. It represents the same angle. So those are uh, some examples of vertical angles. Now let's take a look at some examples of adjacent angles. So adjacent share a side. So let's start with BIC. It's angle BIC. And they have to share a side. So I could do this one, BIA. So it's adjacent. Adjacent to angle B I A. Or I could have said, or I could have said angle B I C. So B I A goes in this direction, B I C goes in this direction. And so I, could, oh, I guess that is the same angle. I could, should have said C I D. So let's change that real quick. So angle C I D. So BIC was the original angle there, so I said CID or BIA. So either of those two angles uh, would be adjacent to that original angle that I mentioned. So now we're going to name some supplementary angles. So I name a pair of supplementary angles. Let's start with a line here. And I'm just going to use this line here, BIF. And so angles that are supplementary 
add to make 180. They make an angle that the two angles again sum to make that number. So BIE, let's start with. So angle BIE uh, is supplementary. Supplementary two, and then so BIE, I need to finish off that straight angle, so I'm going to do EIF. Now notice those are adjacent angles as well. EIF, but they're special adjacent angles because they add to make 180 degrees. So BIE and EIF. So some complementary angles add to make 90. So we needed to know this. Again, this angle here, that symbol means that it's a right angle. So like for instance, BF and HD are perpendicular, so this is a right angle. So I'm going to use these two angles here, but there's lots of ones that I could use. But I'm going to start with BIC, this angle BIC is complementary, complementary to, and then I could do angle, and so BIC I pick, so I'm going to go CID, so angle CID. And see, those are both adjacent angles, but also special adjacent angles because they make a 90 degree angle, so we call them complementary angles. So we're going to use some of those skills to be able to solve some other problems, so let's take a look at them. So now they're asking us to find some different measurements. So find the measure of angle CIF. So CIF is what they want us to find. So what we're going to end up doing is using some different numbers that we have here. So let's start off with this. Let's try to find CIB. See this angle right here is vertical to this angle here, FIG. So I'm going to say angle CIB is vertical, vertical to angle FIG. And so it's going to end up being 60 degrees, which equals 60 degrees. And so what I need to do now is I see that CIF and CIB make 180 degrees because they're supplementary angles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 180 or 60 from 180, and that's going to give me 120. And that's going to be the angle I'm looking for. So the measure of angle CIF is equal to 120 degrees. Let's take a look at another example here, and it's this one. So we'll go with a measure of angle EIF. So EIF, this angle right here is what they're looking for. So notice it's vertical to this angle here, BIA, but I don't have BIA. But I do know that this makes a right angle right here. So I'm going to go ahead and try finding out what this missing angle is. And so I'm going to start off with 90 minus 63. I'm going to subtract those two numbers. And that gives me, let's see, that's going to be 27 degrees. Oops, actually, I'm sorry, let's change that real quick. I do that subtraction. Let's see. Yes, that is, that's the number, 27 degrees. So 27 degrees. So when I do this, I've now got BIA, so angle BIA is equal to 27 degrees. And so what I can do now is I can see that this angle here, BIA, is vertical to EIF, the one I'm looking for. So I'm going to say angle BIA is vertical, vertical to angle EIF. And so that's going to also be 27 degrees. And this one was 120 degrees. Take a look at the next one. It says find the measure of angle BIC. So BIC. So this angle right here. Well, right now I see that is vertical to this angle that's given, FIG. So we'll say angle BIC is vertical, vertical to angle, and then CIB, which is the one I want. CIB or BIC, either one. And so that's going to end up being 60 degrees. And the last one here, CID is what they're looking for. CID, this one right here. And so I know that this one already is 60 degrees. So I know that CID is complementary, 
complementary to angle, and then we have BIC. BIC. So what I can do is I can do 90 minus 60 because, again, the BIC is 60 degrees. And since they're complementary, they add to make 90, so it has to be 30 degrees. Now let's take a look at the next one here. It says find X, and it says that uh, we also have to find EHF. And so X and these two angles, e -H, uh, F -E, or F -H -E and FHG, sum to make 180 degrees. So I'll add them together, and I'll set it equal to 180. And then I've got an equation to solve. So I'm going to subtract that 52 from both sides. So subtract the 52 from this side, and I'm left with 2X equals 60 or 128. I'm do that subtraction. So I divide by 2. And that gives me my value of x. x is going to be 64. So 64 for x, but that's not the only thing they wanted. They also wanted to know what the value of this measure of this angle is. Well, all I have to do is, since they're supplementary angles, I could substitute that 64 back in for x quickly, and that would give me my answer. So 2 times 64 puts me right back at 128 degrees. So, and that's what it says here. 2x is 128 degrees. So the measure of angle E H e H F equals 128 degrees. Now the last one asks me to find X again. So again, I know that the two angles add to make 180 degrees. So I'll set them equal, or add them and set them equal to 180 and combine some terms. So these two terms make 30 degrees. And I add them together. And since they're on the same side of the equal sign, that's what I do. I combine like terms. Now I'm doing opposite operations to get the x by itself. And so I'm left with 150 equals 100 or equals 2x. So when I divide by the 2, divide by the 2 there, I'm left with x equals 75. So that gives me my value of x. Now I just need to find out what the measure of b, c, d is. So I just substitute that back in. Or since 20 plus a number equals 180, I could just subtract 20 from that and get that answer right away. So the measure of angle B, C, D is equal to 160 degrees. Now those are similar problems to what you're going to see on tonight's homework. Good luck.